and I think um, yeah again this is something from um, the director of development and delivery at the mental health foundation suggesting that diagnostic labels can foster a negative self-concept at the very time a young person is forming their identity helping children and young people recognize that their difficult behavior or symptoms are an understandable human response to difficult experiences may provide a useful platform on which they can build a more accurate picture of their strengths and their potential for change. So yeah, again, a more personalized explanation of, yeah, this is what you're struggling with. This is why you're feeling this way, mm. I think is much more helpful. Yeah. 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 Because if we think, okay, this is me having a normal response to some things that's very hard so there's a chance that the really hard thing will pass, then I can feel different too. Yeah, yeah. And grow from it as well. Yeah. Um, so I think there's something about learning and understanding how you respond to adversity mm. and, mm. and recognizing what strengths, what helps get you through, what you need when you're struggling. So it's not just I can survive this, but actually I can learn from it and develop from it and go away with something that will help me later in life. Yeah. yeah, yeah, being able to identify those strengths, so important for us, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and the label doesn't speak to any of that at all. It's more a description of this is how you are as opposed to a more complex picture. Yeah. I think that's how it can be used and I think that's what I'm experiencing and I don't want to say that labels are always unhelpful because mm. I'm sure they can be used in a more sensitive helpful way but I just think it's too simplistic really mm. yeah 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 uh, the the other um, way that the medicalization of distress can impact on young people's attitudes to their difficulties and this is a bit of an odd one, but there's something about adolescents are at a stage in their life where they're working out who they are, what their friends are like, often forming groups of people who are interested in the same things. Mm -hmm. And I have come across a few young people who've been almost trying out the difficulty that their friend is experiencing. So a client who was talking to me in quite a lot of detail about hearing voices and something about it just didn't ring true for me. There wasn't a sense of reality about it. It didn't feel like these were her experiences. Mm. And I later discovered that a friend of hers was hearing voices and it's almost like she was trying out, well, what would that be like? And mm. which is kind of interesting. And, um, yeah. Yeah. and, and I'll hear things like, you know, my friend's got PTSD and I've got some of the symptoms as well. And so, it, yeah, it feels a bit odd to be saying this. And, you know, people say it about self-harm that, mm. that yeah. people might sometimes do it because their friends do it. And I can be quite um, frustrated with that sort of explanation. Like there's usually a level of distress if someone is self-harming. And yet... I'm noticing a bit of this sort of, yeah, I'll try that on and see if that fits me. And yeah. yeah, I feel a bit like that as well. Particularly if a friend who's distressed is getting a lot of support, like, yeah, and, and someone's feeling a bit like, well, yeah, yes. I could do with some of that. Yeah, like someone's feeling a bit on their own, perhaps, and thinking, or maybe not even thinking, but somehow they take on something that is... Um, <laughs> create some more support around them yeah maybe and yeah. and yeah and i don't want that to sound um critical of that it's just it's just interesting it's just something yeah. i've noticed like